result of this, Admiral, as a result of this, do you think there should be changes in the way these are safety rated or inspected so that this won't happen again? Yeah, the, the question was essentially about uh, do you think that there should be changes in safety ratings or inspection uh, for these standards? I, I know that there's a lot of questions about why, how, when uh, this happened, and, and uh, the members of the Unified Command, you know, uh, have those questions too as, as professionals and experts that work uh, in this environment. And this is an, an incredibly uh, difficult and dangerous environment uh, to work in out there. But those, those questions uh, about uh, the uh, regulations that apply and, and uh, the standards, uh, that's going to be, I'm sure, a focus of future uh, review. Uh, right now, uh, we're focused on uh, documenting uh, the the scene and, and continuing the the sub four operation. So uh, throughout uh, the search efforts, we uh, reacted to uh, the information uh, that we had available to us. Uh, and while we continue to uh, send it off for de uh, deeper analysis, again, really complex uh, operating environment for us to work in. Uh, let me uh, check uh, with the experts, but there doesn't appear to be any uh, connection between uh, the noises and uh, uh, the location uh, on the seafloor. Again, uh, this uh, was a uh, catastrophic uh, implosion of the vessel, which would have generated uh, a significant broadband sound uh, down there that uh, the sonar buoys would have picked up. This will be the last question. This was a uh, incredibly uh, complex operation, uh, and uh, we were able to uh, mobilize an immense amount of gear uh, to the site in uh, just a, a really a remarkable amount of time, uh, given the fact that we started without any sort of uh, vessel response plan for this or any sort of pre-stage resources. And so the equipment uh, that was brought on site this morning uh, that we were using uh, was a, a pelagic ROV uh, capable of operating at 6,000 meters, uh, cameras, sonar, uh, other uh, articulating arms and, and uh, resources on it. Uh, and it, uh, you know, we had to transport it here through C-17 uh, aircraft. This is two aircraft that it took to get this up here. And so uh, we've really had the, the right uh, gear on site and worked uh, as, uh, as, as uh, swiftly as possible to bring all of the capabilities that we had to bear uh, to uh, this search and rescue effort. Uh, and it was just a huge uh, international and interagency uh, effort to make this happen. Uh, so I'm, I'm really grateful for all of uh, the responders uh, that came out to support this uh, and and really uh, you know search uh, for uh, for the vessel it is a difficult day uh, for all of us um, and and it's especially difficult uh, for the families and our thoughts are with the families uh, today um, but uh, this was an immense uh, support and we had the right gear on the bottom uh, to to find it. So thank you. Thank you so much, everyone, for attending this afternoon. There are no future planned press conferences. Updates will be shared to the USCG Northeast Twitter page, and our staff will be available to take it down any questions following this. Thank you. I can get that back to you afterwards just so I can confirm. Thank you. <laughs>